G'day, I just thought I'd show you the behind the scenes of what's happening on the Commodore Amiga side when I'm actually writing tracks for uh, the Commodore Amiga, especially for the A4 Amiga release. Um, this is the Amiga 500, which is the sort of popular one that came out at the end of the 80s. All my tracks are written for this. Um, it's got a four channel um, digital to audio converter in it, uh, which allows you to have 8-bit samples playing together four at a time. For the sake of demonstrating today, I've got the Amiga 1200 because it has easy outputs on the back of it. You can see there's just the standard video outputs there that can go into your TV. Today I've got them running into a video camera because it actually allows me to record via the FireWire output into this compact flash adapter uh, so that I can actually put it straight onto the computer without having to capture it. So let's, without further ado, have a look at what's going on with the Commodore Amiga. So this is ProTracker 2, which is my preferred uh, version of ProTracker. There's lots of different versions that were made over the years. This is just one of them. We've just accessed the disk here, and we're going to actually open this file, which is uh, Basewalk. That's the fourth track uh, on the release. And you can see here when we click that, it's actually loading the tune into memory. And you can see the samples here are coming in. If we now jump into our sampler, you can see we can listen to all these samples just using the keyboard as a sampler. We can pitch it a bit higher. I love that one. Some of them loop. <laughs> it's a bit of a dodgy loop, but you don't always notice that's not a bad loop. If we now go and press play, okay, if we look what's happening here, you can see on uh, we got four channels which we can mute. First channel there is the bass line. I have one that's a echoey bass line. So it's just doing an echo effect. This is now playing the chords. Channels one and two, you can see here. And I'm fading between the channels at the start here because it sort of sounds nicer. What happens on later in the song, if we actually have a look, is those channels get a lot tighter and do a lot more. So if we press play. And in channel two. Channel three is the chords. Oh, those are the drums. You can see they're switching a lot of percussion. Only one sound at once. It can't play more than one sample at once. You can hear it's just cutting them up. And channel four there is my chords and a little call and response. Mix them together. So on the columns that you have here, you can see you have a note at the start, uh, we have an instrument, and then we have an effects. So if I listen to the bass isolated by itself and press play, you can see there that we've got 11 and 8 down here. They're actually referencing the samples which are in here. So that's sample 8 and sample 11 that we listened to earlier on. So those samples are being called up here. And certain things are happening, like you can hear that note there, if I actually play that back properly, will be a really short note. It's like a brink, brink. There's other commands as well, like if we go up into um, column two, you'll see the lead line has a four over here, which means it's got vibrato on it. You can set four, which means vibrato. Then nine will be the speed at which it's running. And then four is the amount. So you can see the amount ramp up there. And also the rate ramp up, which you can hear. Now there you can hear it's doing this echo. Dun, 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 and that echo is happening with the C command. C is volume. So you can sort of get a feel for what all these commands are as you use them. You just have to learn what they mean. And once you understand what they mean, they come second nature. If we move to the third column, I'll show you something in here. Uh, you can see here uh, we've got F command, which is actually the speed command, and it goes between 8 and 6, 8, 6, 8, 6. 
so it's a longer interval, shorter interval. And instead of doing a straight sound, it actually makes it shuffle. And that's actually happening because of this command. Now the problem is, this entire drums track can't actually have any other command. If I wanted to change the volume of one of these drums, I can't because I can't put the C command in because it will actually stuff my timing up. In fact, if I just shove a command in to show you what happens, if I make that a C command and make it C18, hear that little stutter? So you have to actually prioritize what you use these columns for. But that's all right, you get used to it, and that's part of the fun of writing for this machine. Same with this track later on in the track. Here it is. So what's happening there, you can see, is also uh, we're getting this sort of triplet feel. And you can see there's things like note delays, so the E command, for instance. There's lots of little tricks that you can use. All right, that was far too deep into that. Let's open another song, hey? I'm going to grab for you the DX7 track, uh, and we'll have a look at where the samples came from as well. I think it's on this disc. So samples-wise, the samples are coming from a lot of places. Um, some of you might be interested. I've got something like the Prophet 600 here, which um, I got some of the lead sounds out of. DX7 used extensively. I'm going to show you a track in a minute called DX Heaven, which samples from this hugely. I've also got uh, sources such as the original LaserMax machine that can read um, the Dragon's Lair games and uh, you know their old arcade games. A lot of the samples were also taken from the Soundtracker disc, which uh, came out with the original... Uh, sound tracker uh, back in 1987 uh, for the Amiga. So 87, 88, 89, and I've used the first seven discs extensively for um, A for Amiga. If I jump into the sampler, this has a lot of samples in it. It's my biggest tune by far. So if we keep going through the uh, the samples on this one, you can hear there's um, lots of DX7 stuff. Uh, that's the Prophet, I think. That's DX7 again. Here is the drums. You can hear I've actually combined to a little sequence. So lots of samples in this one. Um, one thing you will notice uh, is sometimes there's octaves. And the reason there's octaves is because the Amiga only has a certain note range, and if you want to get higher than that, uh, you actually need to create another instrument, a double the octave, to be able to continue up the scale. So that gets a little limiting. I'll just let this one play out, though. So I guess I just wanted to show you the difference between what it sounded like in the studio and what it sounded like on the Amiga. While the Amiga is perfectly capable of playing it back, I really wanted to break it across multiple channels and really finesse each sound and give the, the sound palette to a sound engineer and, and see what he could do with the sound. So that's what I did and um, you can hear the polish on all of the samples. Uh, it's a lot wider, it's stereo, it's got this sort of big depth to it. All the tracks on A for Amiga are, are still playable at live shows. I mean, they, they are basically the same track, uh, just, you know, not as produced. But when you've got a big PA system and everyone's having a good time, you don't really need all the, 
production values on top and it's a different thing I mean I, I have uh, loop points which I can set and I uh, have filters on a DJ mixer and effects It's a very different thing for me going into the studio compared to what I've been used to, which is um, jumping around like an idiot on stage. So hopefully you enjoy the release and thank you very much for watching this little video.